Hello, it's very nice to see you. The subject I have been asked to do the most recently is to make a tutorial on how to do a portrait from a picture. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. I'm not a specialist in portraits. In fact, I consider myself more of a sculptor. And if you want to see some of my work, click here. Therefore, if you see that I do erase a lot during this tutorial, please don't panic. I'm sure by the end, I'll get something decent. The person I'm going to do the portrait of is actress Jennifer Lawrence from Hunger Games. I start by tracing a horizontal line at the height where the hair ends. I'm sorry that I missed it on the shot, it's just a horizontal line at that height. Then I pick a reference point that would be at the center of the head vertically, in this case the eyebrow. There is about the same distance from the eyebrow to the top of the head and from the eyebrow to the chin. So I measure from my top horizontal line and mark the point where the eyebrow will start. And the same distance from that point down is where the chin will end. I mark this with an almost unperceivable line. I measure the width of the face horizontally. It will start here and will end here. Now I use angles for the slant of the lines. From the cheek to the jaw, it slants like this. And from the jaw to the chin, it goes like this. I'll do the other side. I check the slant of the eyebrow and measure its size. I pick the angle of the hair and this part I will eyeball it. Following the direction of the eyebrow is where the ear will start. I do the hair I measure the ear. As we have the main angles and measurements, this face should be fairly correct. I sketch the eye by eye, then confirm the measurement and also measure the space between the eyes, as the size of an eye is also the same distance between the eyes. Then I take the distance from the eyebrow to the end of the nose. And a vertical line from the end of the eye shows me the width of the nose on both sides. I make a small shadow that helps me visualize the place of the mouth. I verify that its height is correct measuring from the eyebrow. The eyebrow is my point of reference for almost everything else. It doesn't need to be an eyebrow, but it's good that you have a reference point to measure the rest. I verify where the ear starts with an imaginary slanted line from the nose. I take a horizontal measurement from the point where the face starts to the end of the hair. I check that I have the right measurement from the top of the head to the end of the nose. And from the same point to the bottom of the chin. This was too low. I rectify it and erase the wrong line. Up to this point I have practically only been outlining with measure points and angles. Now is the time to get serious and start drawing. I start with the eyebrow and then the eye. I look at the picture and to my drawing back and forth. I try to get the exact shape as the original. 
I corrected because I didn't get it right. And redo it carefully. I draw the iris and the pupil. I verify the height of the other eye and fix it because I messed it up. That looks a little better. And I do the iris and the pupil. Up to this point I have been using a harder lead, an H. Now I switch it for a softer one, a 2B for the darks. I refine the lines with the pencil and get some lights with the kneaded eraser. The eyebrows are not solid. I draw them with a series of short lines for the hairs. Caressing the paper with a soft brush, I start giving a tone to the drawing. As I had priorly been using this brush, it already has some graphite in it. I correct the nose, since it looked to me a little bit too wide on the right. Now I work on the mouth. The measurements I originally took are estimates, and now that I'm doing the details, I fine-tune the shapes. I continue shading, and then I do the hair. I check the size and distance of the ear. It looks like it was a little bit too small. The darker shadows, I do them with the lead holder. The lighter ones, especially if they are spread over a wide surface, I prefer to render them with the brush. Looking carefully at the drawing and the picture, I see that there is a correction to be done on the lower part of the face. I told you not to panic. I assure you, everything will come out all right at the end. I smudge the graphite on the lips with a finer brush. I give tone and texture, and then pull lights with my trusty eraser. I don't do every hair, this would look stiff. I see it as groups and bundles of hair. I draw volumes and then I may indicate some hair. You may have seen my tutorial on how to draw realistic hair. If not, you may find it in my videos. I smudge it with a brush and then reinforce some dark lines with a soft 6B lead. I continue shading with the lead holder and with the brush. I now work on the neck. The shadow of the chin doesn't get all the way down since it has a reflected light on it. I love those kind of lights and detail. This is the type of lead sharpener I use. It is fast and efficient, but also it holds the lead powder in it. 
After you double the brush in the powder, please make sure you clean it on a paper before you use it in your drawing, otherwise it may just make a mess. It is a much better idea to go light at first and then reinforce the shadow. As you probably noticed by now, I like working back and forth on different parts of the face. These eyes are very characteristic of hers. That's why I want to make sure I capture the expression and the correct shape. In doing a portrait, it's very important to spot the most characteristic features and concentrate on those. If you are going to get something right, get those special parts. The nose is a little bit wider than what I had, so I get that corrected with the eraser and with the brush. I continue darkening and detailing. As I told you, I prefer to start light and then darken and darken. I draw some more hair and then pull some lights with the eraser. I love the kneaded eraser, it's one of my best allies. To draw the braid, as in anything else, first I sketch the form and then I do the shading following the direction of the hair. Only in the points where the shading is very dark, I may go in a different direction, as the hair will not show in there. I keep darkening and then pull some lights with the eraser. Now I tone the background. This will make my lights and volumes show more, and I soften it with the brush. Now the only thing that is left white is the neck, so I work on that. I do the clothing and then sharpen some of the shadows. I pull some lights on the lips and then make a small hair shadow on the cheek. I pronounce more the other cheek and then draw the shadow of the hair on the upper part of the head. We are nearly there. I reinforce some parts which I feel still need to be darker. The last details and it's ready. I would love to know what do you think about it. Please tell me in the comment section. And if you did enjoy it, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow me with the links below. See you on Tuesday with the next tutorial.